for me. I'm going to now go to Drew Griffin, who was on the scene in Watertown, uh, where these arrests have taken place. Drew, what can you tell us? We just got a, 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 a note, uh, apparently, um, to, from state police spokesman David Procopio, who, uh, well, I don't want to go with that just yet. I can tell you that uh, we do believe, uh, from the eyewitness account of Gabe Ramirez, our photojournalist, that two young men have been taken into some sort of custody here in Watertown, uh, both of them taken into custody in the area behind me, which is now about a four or five square block area that has been cordoned off, and there's there's a huge, huge police presence here. Uh, and actually, we're going to have Gabe step right in here because he was. Gabe, you were yes. positioned over. Yes, at Dexter us. and Nichols. And tell us what you saw from the moment you stepped on the scene. So, uh, I followed a couple of squad cars down Nichols Street towards Dexter. Uh, it was immediately a chaotic situation. I jumped out. There were a couple of other uh, journalists there. We ran towards the scene. Uh, the police had, uh, from multitudes of agencies, all had their weapons drawn, pointing at a vehicle that we could not see from our vantage point. They were screaming for the man, for somebody to put his hands up, to get out of the car. At some point, he did do that, uh, because then we could tell that the, the officers were relaxing. We still couldn't see the, the car or the suspect. And at some point, um, they brought him from his vehicle to a police car. He was completely naked. He'd been, uh, during the confrontation, I did hear him, and I believe you may be able to hear this on the tape we shot. Uh, he did, they did, they were ordering him to remove all his clothes, including his underwear. It was clear, it was clear. You, you, you heard the police officer say, remove all your clothes, yes. remove your skivvies. Exactly, right. exactly. So, um, that's when they brought him completely naked into uh, a was police car. Was he in handcuffs? He, I believe he was cuffed, yes. He was being escorted. Put in the car. So about 10 or 15 minutes ago, um, the FBI arrived. When they... When you say the FBI arrived, uh, yes. uh, what kind of vehicle and who came out of that vehicle? Uh, several FBI agents in, in various uh, states of either civilian clothes or tactical gear, wearing their blue FBI jackets. They came out, they... Um, went to the vehicle where the suspect was seated and uh, removed him from the vehicle at one point. Now, at this point, they'd gotten him dressed. He was still barefoot. He was wearing pants and a jacket, handcuffed from behind. They led him away from the vehicle towards a wall of a business. They shined flashlights in his face, and it looked like they were taking photographs. I couldn't tell exactly what they were doing, but it looked like they were taking photographs of his face. Once they completed that, they walked him back to the vehicle and um, started to question him extensively for about five to ten minutes. Then they put him back in the vehicle. Let me just ask uh, uh, the control room, are we rolling any of the arrest video? And if we are, please say that in my ear when we're doing that. We are taking care not to show a naked man on TV. Drew, obviously. can I... You said... Drew, if I could... Inter D D Drew, if... If I could interject for one second, I want to show the video that, that, that Gabe is referring to right now. We're going to pixelate uh, some of it, obviously, because uh, the individual had been stripped naked by law enforcement, presumably out of caution, to make sure uh, that he uh, didn't have any explosives on him. This is the individual CNN photojournalist who you had heard just a minute ago uh, shot this in Watertown this evening. Police handcuffed a man, the man you see in this video getting into the police car. He's believed, believed to be associated with the shooting at MIT and the subsequent chase through the streets of Greater Boston Thursday night into the Friday, into Friday morning local time. The man was handcuffed, here you see him again, and walked naked to the police vehicle at this time I want to caution, CNN does not know what this man has been detained for. We do not know whether it is connected to the MIT shooting of the police officer uh, or anything else that has taken place in the Boston, Massachusetts area uh, this evening. Uh, but clearly he's of interest to local law enforcement. The FBI is trying to determine uh, if there is a relationship between what happened in MIT and is going on in Watertown this evening and what happened uh, here just a couple blocks away from me at the Boston Marathon on Monday. And uh, Drew, I, I know you're going to ask uh, 
uh, Gabe to explain a little bit further, but but we understand he reported earlier, Gabe, uh, that that individual, the, the naked man in the police car, was taken out after he had been detained, and a photograph was taken of him. Uh, we assume, according to Juliet Kayam, a, a Homeland Security analyst we have at CNN, uh, that is to try to make a connection or see if there is a connection uh, between these individ this individual, and we understand there was a second arrest as well, uh, and uh, the individuals who earlier this evening, uh, Thursday night at, after 5 o'clock, images of them were released by the FBI individuals wanted uh, in relationship uh, to uh, the Boston Marathon bombings. Uh, Drew, I'm sorry to interrupt. I just wanted to make sure that video could be shown and people could understand what they were watching. Please proceed uh, asking uh, Gabe uh, about what happened and what he witnessed this evening. Absolutely. So after, after that... Uh, uh arrest took place and questioning took place i shouldn't say arrest that after that person was taken into a custody there was a second uh, person that you noticed who came out in handcuffs yes it was interesting so as soon as they had fbi had finished questioning the primary suspect and pl placed him back in the squad car another man came around the corner from um, from dexter street onto nichols towards the squad car where this first suspect was seated they questioned him he was coughed and then they took him away. We don't know who he was, what he had to do with the situation, but we all find it very interesting that they would bring him towards the first suspect and then walk him away. Was he dressed? He was dressed. Now, I'm not sure what he had to do with this. I will say that in the chaotic early moments of the, uh, of the scene, a lot of neighborhood people were in the, uh, out on the street, and the police made a few arrests from rowdy neighbors. It could have just been that. It may have just been that. I'm not, we don't know, but I, it was suspicious only because they brought him towards the vehicle where the primary suspect was seated. Obviously, the, the first arrest you saw, the man who was asked to strip naked, they were very concerned about uh, their own safety, the police yes. officer's safety. You didn't sense that with the second arrest? It did not seem, uh, they didn't seem as worried about the second person, but I, that, you know, who can say? And I, was sure. there any FBI involvement? like with the first person you saw uh, arrested with the second person it now i couldn't tell only because it was very dark and the fbi agents who were, had been questioning the first suspect were not questioning that suspect but there were many fbi agents there so the the men that were with him the second suspect may have been fbi they may have been local police i'm not sure and many uh, fbi agents yes i would yes uh, between six and ten at least at that vehicle and probably around the, the around the scene itself and there were also uh men in eod tactical gear it looked like walking towards the um the vehicle the suspect vehicle which was down a slope out of view again of the of the, t of the journalists that are there and uh they were uh yelling various orders to each other and i'm assuming that they're searching for devices now uh, another interesting thing was that at some point the state police came out and asked us to turn off our cell phones uh, as a precaution uh, having been having worked for CNN a telltale symbol, uh, a telltale signal that they were there. Was possible. that early on? That that was just maybe 20 minutes ago. All right, and then did they give give you the all clear? You could use your phones. Then just... then they'd stop. They stopped enforcing the rule. I, now they were telling uh, police officers that were arriving on the scene, as they were approaching the scene, to do that. But I think they thought that we were far enough back that we weren't posing any risk. All right. Now. Uh, just as I was leaving, the state police spokesperson did tell the assembled press there that at this time they believe they only have one of the primary suspects in custody. Uh, they, they could not confirm that a second suspect was in custody. A second suspect that was, involved, that was involved in the chase, they could not positively confirm that he was in custody and that they were that he they we that, that we should assume that he was still at large and that people in the neighborhood should stay in their homes that's all he said okay and i just want to reiterate jake what we both have been reiterating that the two suspects here are just that two suspects here connected to whatever event took place behind us and uh, we don't have any idea whether they're connected anywhere else uh, but that's the first hand account of our photojournalist gabe ramirez who who witnessed whatever it is that we hope to have an explanation for sometime later this morning when the police are ready to to brief us on this jake
Right. All right, Drew Griffin, I appreciate that. It's, if it's possible at all, it'd be great to get uh, Gabe wired up so uh, we could uh, interview him and, and uh, do that live in a, in a second, whenever you have a second to adjust that. I want to recap and show some of the video uh, that Gabe managed to, to shoot uh, this evening. Uh, I'll show that on the screen if the producers will put it up. Um, it is video of an individual in Watertown. Massachusetts uh, being arrested. Uh, you see him, he, we have pixelated some of it out because he was asked to strip naked uh, talking to a Homeland Security analyst earlier. We assume that that's because uh, of a presumption of, uh, of caution, wanting to make sure that the individual didn't have anything on him, perhaps explosives. Uh, the Massachusetts police said that explosives were used in Watertown this evening. Uh, so out of an abundance of caution, asking him to take off his clothing. Uh, later on, uh, we'll show the video again, later on, the individual, of course, According to Gabe Ramirez, the photojournalist from CNN, was asked to get out of the car again. Pictures were taken of him. We presume that this is because the FBI has said to us on the record uh, that they are trying to establish whether or not there is a connection between these individuals who are, uh, one has been apprehended and one uh, it has, uh, I, I believe, is still being uh, pursued in Watertown, Massachusetts, whether or not there is a connection between these individuals and what happened uh, in uh, Boston at the Boston Marathon earlier this week. I want to uh, bring in either uh, Susan Candiotti or Juliet Cayenne, if either of them are available right now. Uh, Juliet, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. 